Dow Watch episode nine. This one's an absolute corker. In it, we talk about the Dash investment fund and their upcoming elections. Pivex having shielded transactions, even on mobile, which is possibly the most private solution available on mobile. If you don't like it, argue with yourselves in the comments. We're talking about Evmos and their upcoming hackathon, which will be with Dora Hacks. There's a very interesting proposal there. And finally, our guest DAO for this episode is ApeCoin, which is the coin of Board Ape Yacht Club NFTs. So enjoy. Hello and welcome to Dow Watch episode nine. I am your beautiful host, Cryptosi, and this in this podcast um, we're going to look at the usual suspects, as the intro should have foretold. I'm recording from the uh, dressing room as the office is going for a slight refurb, and hopefully by the next episode we shall have a well, we'll have almost like a building site of a of a studio. But for now. We've got to use the dressing room. But fear not, we've got a great, oh, well, I've got a great load of projects lined up and some very, very interesting proposals to discuss. I may do a little bit of follow up in um, some future episodes. Might start doing some where we follow up on some because quite a few have had some exciting things happen um, whilst I weren't looking at them. Anyway, first things first, let's jump into Dash. Now, the DIF, which I guess is the Dash Investment Foundation or Dash Investment Fund. Oh, Dash Investment Foundation, yep. Um, they've got an um, elections for new supervisors. They've got five spots. Uh, <laughs> they've got five spots and only four and only four candidates. Seems like nobody wants this job. Um I don't really know why nobody wants this job. Maybe the remuneration is small. Uh, you know, how DAOs expect people to work for nothing. And then they want people to work well. Um, same old same. But if we go here, let me show you a little bit about the uh, the Dash Investment Foundation. If I can find the link to it. It should be. Ah, oh, here we go. I open this one. I'm going to try and find the actual website for for the Dash Investment Foundation. Here we go. So there we go. Dash Investment Foundation, impact driven investment fund. So the idea is that you they take some dash from the treasury or from the uh, from the DAO itself from the payouts in the super block once roughly every month and they invest it in some stuff. Um, I wanted to do something similar to this, um, but I never got it off the ground. And these guys at Dash, they'd done it a long time ago, 2019, which is a little bit after I had the idea. I did speak about the idea publicly, not saying that they stole it from me, but they probably stole it from me. Um, uh, formed in 2019, da 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 so the Dash Investment Foundation can hold assets on behalf of the network and redeploy profits into additional growth oriented projects. Now, the idea behind this was that you don't get crushed by bear markets. So during a bull market, when your budget is large, say you're pumping out in a project like Dash by pumping out half a million dollars every month, you might take 100,000 of that, invest that 100,000 as a kind of um, maybe like a venture capital type thing into some other small projects they invested in some like some wallets and things like that um i think edge wallet was one that they invested in anyway you invest in these small things and when you hit the bear market you've still got these assets granted they're probably worth less because you're in the bear market but they definitely won't be worth as less as your actual token is which would probably have gone down by 90 percent um that's the idea behind it. And now they've got some elections and the elections are for four separate individuals. Um, one called Jared, one called Justin, one called Rodrigo, one called Sven. Now Rodrigo and Sven, I believe, are back for a second term. 
Uh, it's once every 12 months. Jared and Justin are new. Um, this conversation, unfortunately, is split across platforms. So you've got a part of it here and then you've got a part of it on Dash Central. So let's go to Sven because I know this one was quite um, controversial. Well, it wasn't. But a guy who I, I like is now um, being seen to be acting grumpy. Um, most of the response. All right. Okay. So anyway, um, so this guy, Sven, we'll look at this guy in particular. Um, but they're, they're, this guy's got history. The other two, uh, all of them seem to have turned up around 2017. Um, this guy, well, he started in 2013. He's got a very similar story to mine. He goes for his story. He had the, the Bitcoin block wars. Uh, he left Bitcoin because of the block wars which happened. He was firmly in the big block camp. So was I, funnily enough. So were a lot of the people who weren't miners. Um, after 2017, new people came and started calling Roger Vera a scammer and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But that's beside the point. Uh, Bitcoin Cash. So after that, he decided to come to Dash for some decentralized governance, which is the reason why I went to Dash. It's what I like the most about these projects. Um, it was more about the governance for me than it was about the privacy at the time. Uh, either way. It goes on, it goes on, and he says all of these things that what he wants to do, why he wants to stay. Uh, he feels like they can do some good things. Uh, seven digit seed round. Okay. I don't know if this is, I think this is his talking about his personal role. I think he's talking about his personal, his personal life. But anyway, um, that's the, the proposal that's up on uh, Dash at the moment, the most interesting one. I think it's um, I think it's a great idea and it's really not received with as much excitement as I would like by the Dash community. But I think it's one of those things that there's no the direct um, the direct profit or the direct benefits to the network aren't that obvious um imagine if these guys invested in a hackathon company i know i love hackathons go on about them over and over again but imagine if they did and then this hackathon company grows and grows and grows and then they start having hackathons and all the networks and a part of that comes back to dash and not only that but you can push dash into these the minds of these uh new developers, onboard new developers to the Dash ecosystem, create a bigger ecosystem, get more users and take over the world. Um, one of the interesting counter arguments comes from Grandmaster Dash. It got minus five points. I think he's he's now becoming a bit like uh, Lord Dana, if you watch the show regularly, a bit like Lord Dana and um, Christian came on Evmos, whereby whatever he says gets met with hostility. I think he's he's getting to that point now. Uh, this is minus five points. He said a definite no based on his political beliefs. Um, I understand that some people may disagree with what he's saying, but I can't see that everybody disagrees with it. You know, I can't see that everyone disagrees with it. Um, let's look at what it was that he he was upset about. Um, I I know what it is, but I'm going to show you so you can see it. Well, so we go to an old link on Reddit, and it was Amanda B. Johnson. Amanda B. Johnson put forward this, um, created this Reddit thread, or put forward a blog post. Um, where she said that the developer for the Electron wallet, uh, Electron or Electrum, I can't remember how, which one they called it, um, a guy who I've actually, I think I spoke to him regarding forking it, uh, because we forked it to create Zephyr on the Vex. It didn't go very well. Well, we made it, it was built, but then, um, anyway. 
Uh, so he's upset about what's happening. He's uh, clearly Ukrainian and he's upset about uh, Ukraine having been invaded. And he says that he wants, um, I think he wants, I think he, well, in some way, yeah, the best way to help them is to kill as many Russian army, mem members of the Russian army as possible. Um, Amanda wasn't that happy with that. She felt like Dash, as a protocol, should not choose sides. Um, I don't know. Sometimes she choose sides, maybe not in this one. It's not as obviously as clear cut as people would like to believe. Um, but the problem was that he added this um, call for help into the actual wallet, and it wasn't it wasn't sanctioned by the network. He he went above and beyond and just done it of his own solution. He said, if anyone doesn't like it, like us, basically. Which, to be honest with you, if I was in his position, I probably would have done the same thing. It's the guys under stress. And I think Amanda recognised that. And so her her tone was more like, um, we should let this guy, um, we should let this guy relax. Uh, allow allow him space to focus on himself as he's in severe distress and um, making it clear that Dash Network does not employ people who call for violence to be used on actual or potential Dash users. Um, now, we're getting slightly off topic here, but the reason why, uh, if I can find it, the reason why Grandmaster Dash wasn't happy with Sven was that Sven somewhat endorsed um, what he had done. I think this is him here. He's long admired her work, considered you smart and well-spoken. This is, you know, the typical uh, build them up before telling her she's an idiot. Um, but this post comes across as tone deaf and incredibly misguided. Okay, fair enough. So. Akva, uh, Svena, sorry, also, also has a, a, um, he also has a, he's also picked the side. Effectively, most of us in our part of the world have picked the side. You know, Putin's a madman, um, NATO are not encroaching, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I think, um, he's got, I think he's. I think he's entitled to have an opinion, right? But the problem is, Grandmaster Dash feels that what happens if this man uses political opinions and starts spending the Dash investment funds on things which are picking one side or the other? And I think that's a, a fair, um, I think it's a fair question. I wouldn't go for a definite no based on that. Um, but I do think it is a fair question that you have to have you have to separate the two. I think you definitely have to separate the two because otherwise what happens is within Dash, you have four guys who are more than likely from the same demographic. They're probably more than likely all male uh, from the Western world. I doubt there'll be any Russians there. I doubt there'll be any Asians or Africans. I doubt like they'll all come from the same background, probably all Christian, you know, certain age group. They're going to have the same idea and that, won't be representative of the entire network. So the question was asked. I think he, I don't think he asked it in the correct way, but it looks like he talks a lot, so he doesn't spend a lot of time making it look nice. But he's got his points out there. Um, someone's counter -arg counter argued is very yes, a definite yes, based on the very human belief which are shared by all those countries united against Russia and shared by myself personally. So it just, it just then. Um, because it then goes down into, you know, nationalistic nonsense. The whole country don't agree. Um, the whole country, I know my country, United Kingdom, isn't all against Russia. We're not all pro-war. Um, people, people definitely have different ideas about things. I'm going to keep my own ideas private. Uh, Dash may be neutral in Russia's war against Ukraine and its civilians, which I think is a mistake, but I am not. It is good to see other people express their opinion freely and openly about this war as well. Also a yes based on his long-term involvement with Dash. No, I think that's fair. Right? I like that. I'll give that an up. I'll give that an up vote because I think it's fair. He says um, Dash may be neutral. Dash should be neutral, but he is not personally. Fair play.
absolutely fair play. Um, I asked the, the question if he takes the stance one side or the other, because it may be, uh, uh, is it okay to use Dash to forward his personal agenda? Just to be clear, I said if I was in the shoes of the devil, I'd be like, I don't care. Overall, I agree, though, certainly not the only factor a master node owner should consider when deciding whether or not he's fit for the role. Um, and there was a response a few hours ago. He'll have to walk a fine line, I suppose. Usually this issue won't come up. Most investments are not political. At the end of the day, I want them to make money. I am, however, not on board with how they are attempting to make money currently with those investments. I'll be more interested in seeing them trade Dash and perhaps some other coins and bring that value back to Dash. It's risky, sure. But what they are doing now is also super risky. Most of the startups they invest in now are bound to fail and maybe only one will make 100x bigger bags in 10 years. Uh, that's how investing goes. Um, Say so he doesn't like their strategy. Which is fair. Um, okay, let's look at the pros and cons because I spent a lot of time dissecting that in a try not to get myself cancelled kind of way. So... <clears throat> um, the pros are, I like the, the proposal because it's a novel use of Dash funds. Overall, the Dash Investment Foundation, I like it. I think it's a good way to use the funds. Make, makes um, the Dash Treasury somewhat bear market proof. Um, it's only for applicants, which is makes it easy to go through them. I went through them one by one. None, none of them really stuck out as um, superstars, but none of them really stuck out as potential problems. They all seemed... Um, um, a lovingly average, really, which means that the results should, should uh, speak for themselves. Unfortunately, there's no way to see the Dash Investment Foundation's portfolio as it stands, their percentage, what they own in things, the transparency is a bit poor. Um, the supervisors are not very communi communicative, which is a definite problem. If we look here at the actual... Um, well, not this one. If we look at the actual proposal, if we look at the actual proposal within, um, let me find it, within the forums where everybody's supposed to be able to speak, where everybody is eligible to speak. Oh, quick thing. With this Dash Central, only people who own Masternodes can comment here. Only people who own Masternodes can comment, which makes it like, you know, like a buffet buffet for the bloated, um, just for the, the, the corpulent, the big wigs, the fat cats. Um, this is a free space where anyone can speak. Now, there's four people here, and for whatever reason, none of them are none of them are speaking. So this has been up over a week and none of the four people have come here and replied or done anything. That's not a good sign, really. Um, I guess one of them may be the spokesman for them, but during the election time, they should be, you know, like, they should be pitching, saying what they want to do, what they can do, what we think they should do. You know, they, they, should, be, they should be speaking to the community. So their lack of communication is a bit of an issue for me. Um, seems like nobody really wants the role you do come under great scrutiny. I think with Grandmaster Dash saying that he doesn't want uh, Sven to do it because Sven is supportive of the other developer using the Dash platform to, you know, I don't know, try to rally people um, to be against the people that are invading his home country for whatever reason. I think it does put you under a certain amount of scrutiny in a certain amount of spotlight i personally wouldn't want to do it i definitely am capable of doing it but i wouldn't want to do it because of that sort of spotlight i would want to be able to have my own political beliefs and be able to to talk rubbish whenever i feel like it um not to say that the guy was talking rubbish but i want to be able to say what whatever i want to say and i don't want people to come back and say oh because he thinks this he can't invest um I would like to see the website improve. I would like to see there be some kind of like portfolio, like I said, and the information and the discussion is spread across two platforms, which I don't like. Uh, it does happen for almost every 
um, almost every proposal because people can't comment and people do use the, the forums. But the the discussion is too small. The 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 actual candidates aren't communicative enough. Um, how am I going to vote on this particular proposal? I'm going to vote yes for all four of them. I think um, in the absence of better ideas, I would rather this money was lost to a bunch of people who didn't do it very well than not created, which is the op options. It's either not created or it's uh, or it's lost. What are your thoughts, guys? What do you think? Do you think that Grandmaster Dash was in the right for saying that uh, he shouldn't be able to have the role, that Sven shouldn't have the role because he, he was backing uh, another developer who who could well be a friend of his? Um, they You do become friends if it was one of my friends in that situation. I, I would definitely back them. Do you feel that he shouldn't have the role because of that? Do you feel that the Dash Investment Fund is a waste of time or a waste of money? Um, how do you feel it could be improved? Uh, comments down below. Let's get the conversation moved to yet another platform. And with that, let's move on. Uh, let's move on to the mighty PivX. Where are you? Here? Right, so the PivX proposal this month that we're going to be looking at is to add shielded transactions and deterministic masternodes to PIVX. Shielded transactions already exist, but the only way you can use them is if you have a core wallet, which means downloading about, I don't know, maybe 20 to 25 gigabytes of data onto your computer. Usually takes days to sync up fully. It's a massive undertaking uh, for privacy, and that's why not a lot of people use it. What these guys want to do, uh, Alessandro Rezi, Sandude, and JS Kitty via PIVX Labs, which is um, probably the most productive corner of the PIVX ecosystem. What they want to do is they want to add um, shielded transactions to my PIVX wallet, which means you can have them in a light wallet format, none of the downloading, all this stuff, you just do it through a a browser extension or a special website, special web browser. Um, and that will allow you to have privacy. The exact scope of the privacy isn't included here, but it's the same privacy that Zcash uses. So it is among the best. It's in the, the top two. Um, the argument is generally between Zcash and Monero. Um, and the argument will rage on. Anybody who thinks that Dash and the coin join is in the picture, they can bite me. Um, shielding, shielding will be uh, by an update to my PIVX wallet, as I said, and the deterministic masternodes is the second half of this. The deterministic masternodes I'm not so enthralled about. Um, my developer friends who I speak to, shout out to Jarki, some of them really love it. They think that they're great or oh, they make the network so much stronger and da 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 da. But as far as an end user is concerned, it makes no difference to my life. I could care less. Um, it means, and they show what the improvements are. Um, how does it benefit the users? Deterministic masternodes means uh, masternode owners will know exactly when they're going to receive a reward. The same can't be said for people at stake. So again, it's only really for the fat cats. Uh, splitting rewards, sending them to different addresses, who cares? Delegating voting permissions to other addresses, who cares? They are also simpler and require less maintenance, providing a higher uptime, who cares? Um, there's not a particularly um, big problem with uptime on PIVX masternodes as it is. So for me, deterministic masternodes are a massive who cares. Shield uh, developers will be livid with me for saying that, but like, I, I'm just a simple end user, you know. Shields makes it possible to hide all transaction details from the sender to the receiver. Up until now, it was feature exclusive to PIVX Core, PIVX Core Wallet. Users sending transactions from my PIVX Wallet will now be able to preserve. Now, this is massive because my PIVX Wallet will work on mobile devices. So this is huge. I'm not sure that Zcash have a mobile app yet. Um, if they don't, this will be the most private privacy you can get on mobile. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say bar none. If you know of 
more private, uh, more privacy that you can get on a mobile. Put it in the description. Put it in the comments below, please. Um, and we can argue about it there. Okay, uh, I put in a question. It seems Dash already implemented deterministic master nodes. Will you be using their code? If you are using their code, it's quite a lot of money. The amount they're asking for, in, uh, coincidentally, I should have said at the top, 25,000 PIV, which equates to about $11,000 today's prices. There's also not a roadmap or a um, predicted time of how long this will take, which is important. Um, what about contingencies? How are you going to go through testing and all that? Um, there's none of that seems to be accounted for or discussed in this proposal. Proposal seems quite short, um, considering how much of an impact it could have on the network. The balance between masternodes and stakers is a big deal. It can crash the network if too many people move at once. So if they do something which breaks the masternodes somehow and a lot of the people are not happy and they move to staking all at once it can alter the difficulty in mining new blocks and freeze the network it has happened a few times um as far as i know it's still something that can happen if too many people move from one type of um staking or rewards gathering to another so uh, I also said, did you run this past Boris? He likes to be woken up from sleep anytime someone tells him to do something like that. That's me jacking around on the forums. Uh, how would I be voting on this? Oh, can I go for the pros and cons? The pros are uh, massive pro, obviously. Shielding on mobile is uh, just a massive deal. I would give my left arm for this. I think it's great. I think not only will it allow you to do it on mobile, but it allow people to add privacy into their applications, providing a API through to a MyPrivix wallet, or the technology, therefore, is there for them to add this sort of privacy to their applications. It's a massive deal. I think it's a um, huge undertaking. Um, the price is... I don't know. It's difficult to price these things because there is nothing to price them against. I think it's worth the money, personally. Um, if you're going to spend money on anything, spend it on this. One of the issues PIVX is having or will have is that they're spending much more than their budget will allow. So some of the some of the proposals that have gone through won't actually be funded. I hope this is not one of them. I hope this does get funded. Um, the cons are it does it does the uh, the proposal doesn't really go into it enough technical detail for me i think they could have gone into more technical detail about how they intend to get this job done will they be using the dash code i would have liked to know um i would have also liked to know what their contingencies are in case they do something wrong um will they get their code audited uh, who's going to be they won't get it audited but who's going to be looking over the work of the developer um what's the what's the hierarchy is fuzzballs involved um all these things i'd like to know i'd love it if fuzzballs himself came and left a, a comment here but he he hasn't so that's those are the those are the 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 cons um how would i vote in this i'm going to vote yes i would love if these two things were um separate if shield was one proposal and deterministic master nodes was another so i could vote no on deterministic master nodes and yes on shield but the, the two come together Another thing is with the deterministic masternodes, unlike Dash, PIVX don't use the the features of the masternode. Um, the dark send or the coin join PIVX isn't going to use because it's crappy. And the um and the instant send PIVX isn't going to use because PIVX is so fast anyway. So who who even cares about masternodes on on PIVX besides voted, which is the whole entire premise of this video? and um, collecting rewards. So for me, this is a yes, simply because the yes to shielding outweighs the deterministic master nodes. So uh, that's a yes from me. Uh, JS Kitty's put his name to it, which means a lot. I don't know who Alessandro Rezzi is, but no doubt we'll be seeing his name quite a lot in the future. Next up, Evmos, 
Okay, here we go. Dora Hacks, Hackathon Proposal with Evmos. Um, I love this. I love hackathons. I love hackathons. But we can look at Dora Hacks in case you don't know. Uh, I don't know if this will. That was odd. I don't know. They in that in that link they should really have linked to. Oh, it's also like it's passed already. Okay. Well, when I first researched it, um, I voted yes on it as well. By the way, Dora Hacks is basically one of these hackathon uh, companies, uh, companies, organizations, communities, all three of those. Um, they do loads of things in various ecosystems and one of the ecosystems that they want to be joining will be evmos um dora hacks are well organized they do produce some great um hackathons one which i was looking at today was their one on aptos i don't think this is the one but they do they do produce great hackathons uh aptos grant now yep they do produce great hackathons it's a good way to get people involved in evmos and building projects on evmos and just builds the ecosystem um like they say here leverages the developer community and brings them uh brings them closer to evmos dev toolkits apis on board more developers to adopt evmos tech stacks and build on evmos etc etc education innovation they're asking for quite a lot of money, $125,000. Um, I guess half of that will be for prizes. I don't know. It doesn't actually say how much will be for prizes. I don't know. Prize pool will be approximately 125. So it looks it looks as though the prize pool is all that they're asking for. Um, so they're not they're not asking. They're not asking for anything more. I don't know how they fund themselves then, but that's that's good for Evmos. Another reason why they should vote yes, and they did vote yes. Um, so they would have a, a hackathon uh, late in Q1 or Q2 to be confirmed. It's going to be virtual. That's fine. Doesn't make any difference. I think virtual is better because then people can enter from wherever they are in the world. They don't need to get on a plane and go anywhere, and it's not particularly local. Um, judges will decide on the winners and give out prizes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The funds will be in a three or four multi sig. Um, Tendermint, Timmy, Spark, IBC, Leo from Block Hunters, just by some some trusted people. I don't know who they are, but it doesn't really matter. Um, there's more support in details and discussions in the Commonwealth Post. Okay, so the let's look at the or let's discuss the pros and cons of this proposal uh, very quickly in a uh, parliamentary way. It's a huge hackathon, similar to ENCODE, which I also like. Uh, Dora Hacks, I, if you can get involved with these guys, you definitely should. It might even be bigger than ENCODE, I'm not sure. They can argue amongst themselves. Or you can say in the comments which, which, which hackathon you prefer, which other hackathon Evmos could get involved in. Um, I couldn't think of any cons directly, but one of the cons which I've got about Evmos overall is that they don't really promote their winning hacks enough. They don't support them enough. None of the winning hacks have gone on to become prominent projects within the Evmos community. They seem to win their hackathons and then, you know, there is no organization to take it from a hackathon to a um, launch pad, let's say. Take it from a hackathon to another way for them to raise money, print the token, get it out there, get it finished. There doesn't seem to be that that connection there. And if they are doing that, those projects are not becoming prominent enough. And that needs that needs um, that needs help. Uh, what am I voting? It's a easy, very very simple yes from me. Very very simple. Um, yeah, I think things like this are the best ways to spend your your treasury can't think of anything better uh quadratic funding so here we have it's more more information here and some excuse me some previous projects that they've done so a similar sized project oh 
playmakers, I guess. Playmakers would be a similar size project. And you can see here, uh, they've done this at the end of last year. There was 1 million US dollars in prizes and grants. Seems a bit too good to be true. Caitlin does have a lot of venture money behind it in the uh, east of the world. So here you can see the, the projects that get made and you can then jump into them and have a proper look at what they've built. And sometimes you can see a demo of it. Uh, so that's that. That one's a yes from me. And on to the guest DAO. The guest DAO is where we started Board Ape Yacht Club and more importantly, ApeCoin. So the proposal here is from, I guess from is accurate, from Forever Apes. Um, and they want to have a, they want to build like a, a, I want to say Lego upgrade, um, chance to expand their community uh, eligible to create, claim Lego Brickheads instructions produced by the Forever Apes team. So the Lego bricks will be available for purchase online. Completion of these unique ape instructions will unlock a series of future drops and the community will be rewarded for their participation. For example, of all costs, so it costs zero. Just it will just be instructions for how you can create these uh, Lego apes, which I will show you here. There is an example. The instructions will show you how to create one of these Lego apes. Um, I guess you get the blocks as well and the instructions, and you can put it together and you can build your own little Lego ape. It'll be a nice little collectible. Uh, roughly 150 Lego bricks, which will be sold separately. Professionally designed Lego replica, custom illustrated and designed instructions, part list included. So I don't know if it's by the brand Lego. I don't know if Lego is actually a brand in itself. It looks like it looks like they're getting the brand. Um, when it says, if we look down here, they say, yeah, they're trying to obtain the IP rights, so they're going to have to contact Lego themselves. But the DAO just um, the DAO is giving ape, uh, Forever Apes the, the right to go ahead and, and do this. And it's going to cost Forever Apes zero. It's going to cost the ape coin, the ape coin DAO zero. And the way people are going to get this is by tweeting um, or by doing some other social media activity, which also spreads the word about ape coin. Uh, people who own these board ape yacht clubs are amongst the richest in the NFT sphere because each one of these apes costs a pretty penny. Uh, let's go through the pros and the cons of this particular proposal. I, I do really like it. Encourages uh, or encourages engagement. Probably creates new users. Some people, I don't think you have to actually own a board ape to go through and do this. So people who don't actually own board apes might get one of these um, as a uh, collectible within itself. I guess a collectible within itself. Um, I, I would be interested in getting this. It would look nice in my new studio, like up on a shelf, looking nice next to some books or something that I've never read. I think it would be quite a nice thing to do. Cost the dial nothing. And um, hopefully they get to incorporate a, a well-known brand, massive brand, in fact. I don't know if they'll be able to do that, but we, we shall see. Um, the cons, I couldn't really think of any. It's interesting that in the discussions on the forum, um, a lot of the the board eight holders are here, and I can't see anybody has anything um, to say against them. Uh, would there be any limit to the number of people who could claim the instructions? Also, is there a specific kit of Legos that and that we would need to buy? Uh, multiple kits, blah blah blah. No limit over to anyone. The Lego parts list should be included. All pieces are available for purchase on the official Lego website as individual pieces, depending on the demand. In the future, we could create a custom box and include the whole kit inside, but it would require more resources. Or they, someone else could do that as a little business. You could once once you've got the kit list, you just buy the Lego, put them in the box yourself, and resell them. Wouldn't you? We will offer one-to-one -one Lego instructions for any 
Oh. Oh, okay, right. So they could do a customization so you could get the instructions, the one to one Lego instructions for any NFT. So you you could do it for your own particular NFT. Very interesting. Great feedback. Okay. Um, yeah, so for me, uh, this one's uh, a yes. Definitely a yes. I'm definitely going with a yes for this one. If I had any ape coin, I would vote yes. I, I, obviously, I obviously don't because I, I was too busy buying stupid Decentraland when I should have been buying apes. Didn't even get a bloody crypto point. But it happens. Um, love what they're doing there. And if that does happen, I will pick uh, an ape that I will get a, a, a uh, set of instructions for. And I'll build it and put it on my own little case. And if I can't get one because I don't own an ape, then I'll just go and buy an ape. Thanks for watching. Um, please, if there's anything you feel that I could do to improve this show, or if you want your DAO featured, because you know we do a special special guest DAO every every single episode. If you want your DAO featured, please put it in the comments below or at me on Twitter. Um, I am actively looking for DAOs to feature within this show. Um, thank you for watching. Please smash that like button. I got up over 100 views on my last video. I'm really happy with that. We are growing. More and more people are watching. And um, yeah, I'm really enjoying this. So thanks for all the support. Uh, like, share, subscribe, comment, all of that good stuff. I am Cryptosi. I will see you in the next one.